So that it should, I, I should say, can you handle it? <laughs> if you're ready, you think you could handle the lesson for today? Wow. <laughs> Today's lesson is the gate. Sometimes I hear myself asking myself, when things are going on in my life, what if? What if things were different? What else? What if I had made a different decision? What if I didn't have all the problems that I have? And another part of me says, The answer to that question is, what do I have now? Which is another question. What do I have now? You cannot bring back the past, but you can move forward from what you have now. What do you have now? Besides the physical things that you possessed, what do you have now? When thoughts like that come up for me, I, I smile because I get, I, got to, I get to realize that now is a result. A result of everything prior to now. I cannot change anything prior to now. Prior to now is a memory that I hold. Now, I could hold on to that memory for the rest of my life and have regret. Or I could seize this moment and say to myself, I thank the past for allowing me to arrive now, to be able to take in new information and make different decisions. This is the greatest time in my life right now. And if I realize that, I ask myself, what can I do about it? Realizing that my life presently is the result of what went prior. What can I do? to create beyond now. That the question, what if, will never come up again. What can I do? Throughout our time on earth, from the time we began, we have been sitting in a programming machine that has instructed us on everything in life. What life is, who we are, what God is, what the past represents, what the future represents. And it's all coming from other people who we read, listen to, that has helped us to become what we are. I am saying, now you don't have to go along with me, but as for me and my house, I, 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 I want to change. I, I want to keep growing. And I realize that I cannot rely on the past to change. I could only rely, rely on now. What information 
should I be using to go forward? Because the information that I had in the past brought me here. And many days I wake up, I don't like what I am and what I feel. How can I feel differently? About 50 years ago, I began a journey, a journey to find me. I haven't found me yet, and that's 50 years gone. But I haven't given up. I remember reading the Gita, which is the Indian, an Indian book on philosophy and stuff. And the character in the book is Arjuna. And his charioteer was Krishna. And Arjuna had to go to war against his relatives. And he began to make up all kind of excuses. But every time he made an excuse, Krishna would say, but you got to go do what you have to do. And many of us find ourselves in that same position, knowing what we must do, but because of conditioning, not doing what we are supposed to do. Not realizing that life is a series of moment, moments strung out. And every moment is different, new, but yet still we are practicing the same things in the new moments given. And our life becomes a pattern of existence. And for many, it appears hopeless, worrisome, and difficult. And yet still, as Christians, we have a wonderful set of materials found in the New Testament. Some spoken by Jesus, some written by the writers. In fact, I, I was reading a book about 20 years ago or more than that, and they were saying that it's only about 12 statements in all the Gospels that could be accredited to Jesus. That everything came after, as people acquired the understanding to try to decipher what he was saying and put their own little things on it like we do. But sometimes I go to John, the Gospel of John, and John has some wonderful I am statement. I am represents Krishna or Christ in me. I want you to get that. We're not talking about a man. We're talking about a presence of God in each one of us, that each one of us has the presence of God in us. It is what we call spirit. It is what we call life. It is what we call the eternal one. That all of us are part of this universal complex, immeasurable substance. Each one of us is a part of it. Each one of us has it. The only thing that makes us different is what we think about ourselves. But each one of us is spiritual, mental, physical. But it's that program that we hold in mind 
that triggers our words, our actions, our reactions, and brings about the results that we have called life. But each one of us are here to do the same thing, to live. And how we live, we do so out of that program that guides us. Some of us feel inferior. Some of us feel superior. Some of us have no feelings. We just come and go. But each one of us has a concept of self, who we think we are, and that concept drives us. Drives our actions, our reactions, drives our words. In fact, makes up all our attitudes, everything about us comes from that concept of self. And we don't know, as we sit in these pews, that each one of us is the same. Having the same desires to live, to increase. When God made man, it says in, in Genesis, he said to them, go forth and increase. When my, I shouldn't say man, humankind, he said, go forth and increase, add to. Because you live in this realm of pure opportunity and potentiality, our role is to go forth and multiply, not just add. Double up, triple up. And yet still some of us have been taught that you are not good enough. And we believe that. We believe a lot of the stuff that people have said to us about us. But John said some statements, and the one that I want to deal with today, if you go to your bulletin, you might read it with me. Where is my bulletin? No, that's the song, that's the sheet. Oh, I have it here. Under the lesson it says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Well, you know, we read these statements, but they're metaphors. They're not supposed to be taken literally. We've got to read them and examine them, examine them for what they are saying to us. Let's, let's start in the beginning. I am. I am is the first movement of the verb to be, I am. I am becomes the creative energy that we send out into the world. As soon as you say, I am great, greatness begins to follow you. You shall declare a thing and it must come to pass. I am. So I am in me. It's the creative voice in me. That God presence in me. That says exactly who I am. I am the gate. What is a gate? A gate acts in two ways. It closes and it opens. So, I am the opening to the rich potential that lies around me. I am. The spiritual part of me is that in me that opens the world of the potentiality that is God, that is always around me that Jesus called the kingdom of heaven. So I am opens that gate 
to the universal flow of spiritual substance that is ever available. I am. Is the Christ in me. I am is the creator in me. From I am stems forth the rest of my life. I want you to ponder a moment how many negative things you have put behind your I am. And they have come to pass. <gasps> Breathe. How many I am? Because nobody has taught us that whatever we declare will come about, that what we think about must come about. Nobody told us that when we were two and three and four. In some households, all they told you when you did things, you were bad. You going to hell. And the devil is your friend. Nobody told you that you have to seek and find that Christ self in you and make the declarations and celebrate your greatness. I am the gate. I am the opening to the universe. And each one of us is the opening to the divine flow of substance that is the universe. When I recognize that the spirit within me is that entrance to, guess what? When it says I will be saved, it is not, not saved from no hell and damnation. I will not have difficulty because the information that comes to me comes from absolute good and all will be well. That's what that means. I don't know. If if, if I am going to the opening of a rich source, guess what? The rich source is going to flow through me. Ain't no dead stuff in there. Ain't no sick stuff in there. Ain't no lack and limitation. Because I'm sitting at the opening to all the good that there is, the only thing that could flow into my life is what? The only thing that could flow into my life is what? No, no, no. Absolute good. Absolute good is definitive. It is not your good. It is the all good. Because each one of us has a different connotation of what good is, right? You look at me and say, heaven is good. Other people are looking and say, so, so. <laughs> Subjective. I am talking about when, when, as a little boy, my mom and dad, we, we didn't have no washing mush machine. My mother had a tub and a juking bowl. And sometimes when she's washing, she went and she got blue soap. And it had a little block of something called Oxford Blue. And after bleaching, she rinsed in the blue because the whites were whiter. And still that was not absolute. It's whiter than that. Hello now. This good that I'm talking about that is absolute, once your mind becomes in tune that if it is to be, it is up to me, guess what? When you open up, you get a gush. You ever had a gush of goodness that you, it wants to knock you down? You're not strong enough to hold it? When your mind is opened up to the goodness that is absolute, you can't hold it back. You know the song, hold it back, hold it back. No, you can't say hold it back because it will knock you down. You ever had spirit knock you down? I remember in 1985 or 86, when I was ordained in Chicago, and tell this story sometimes, there were four of us being ordained. 
And the one, because we were in alphabetical order, the one that fell before me was Della Reese, R-E-E-R-E-I. -E 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 so I was the last one. And Della Reese in front of me, and she's walking down, going towards Johnny Coleman, who was doing the ordination. And Della started to hiss. <laughs> and in my arrogance, I stood up at the back with my hand in my pocket, confident that that would never happen to me. And as she walked and hissed towards Johnny, when she reached in front to Johnny, her knees wanted to collapse. And I'm telling, I said, what a hypocrite. <laughs> because she was a star on television. She had a musical career, and everybody around the world knew that. Hey, man, give me a break. And then they called a name that I recognize, Evan Reed. And water started to pour from every opening in my body. And there was a hotness on my skin. And as I walked towards there, I, 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 I felt a halting in my step. I cried. I snorted. <laughs> saliva ran from my mouth. All my pores were opened. I didn't know I had holes there. And I got to realize, when you surrender, you lose control. And when you lose control, that's when spirit knows you are ready. You can be uptight for the rest of your life. But you've got to learn sometimes to surrender to spirit. That I am is the real controller of your life. And when you allow it to move through you, it opens up a world that you have never been into. There's a clearance in front of you. And you could hear the words I can see clearly now. The shutters have been lifted. And a peace comes. If you're doing it for ego, it's a different thing. You see, sometimes the ego that was with me in the beginning, what's the matter with this woman? No. Yeah, no. She's pretending. No. When that gate opens up and the truth is revealed to you, something happens. And you will never be the same. That spirit of God in you. If you ever open your mind to it. That which was impossible. Becomes possible. And spirit has a way of. Of preparing us for greatness. But we keep telling ourselves. I am, and we put not great. Say with me, I am the greatest thing in my life. I am the greatest thing in my life. Now you got to believe that. We're not talking about comparing yourself with other people. You're comparing yourself with no one. You are accepting that you are the greatest in your life. 
All greatness comes through you to you. If you don't declare your greatness, guess what? You remain small and impotent. You believe that other people have your number. And when the number calls, they will pick the number and then pick you. <laughs> Anybody still believing that? Hello now. When the roll is called up yonder. <laughs> you better pick your own number and go. One of the things that, 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 that Paul says, Paul says in, in Romans 8 and 17, he says that if we are children of God, then we are heirs. Hello now. If I am a child of God, or goodness, or absolute goodness, or the infinite, then I am heir to all that goodness is. And in me is the gate to it. So my role should be what? Focusing on opening my own gate, not opening yours. <laughs> but many of us try to open other people's gates. And then the dogs come out and bite us. You're too fast. You understand what I'm saying? Your role is to seek to open that gate and to keep it open and not have it closed. This is your role. Stop getting involved in the lives of other people. Not important. Don't believe that what you are doing is to help people. You can't help anybody. <laughs> you can't help anybody. They have to choose to use what you are saying to them to find help. Stop casting pearls before swine. Wonderful metaphor. You know, so, so sometimes I find I found myself in that situation many, many times where you set out to help somebody and it becomes a habit to them to receive your help. And then when you realize that energy is, because you could feel it sometimes, the energy is drawn out of you and you're not getting anything back. Not that you're looking for anything back, but you're looking for a boost. Because if you don't show up at the right time, they get angry. And if you don't have the right amount, they get angry. And if you don't do what they expected you to do, they get angry. You are volunteering. Hold on now. When they're complaining, you, could, you just have to cut yourself. It's not easy cutting yourself when you have established a pattern that you are their help. Have you ever established in other people that you are their help in time of need? Hold on now. And their time of need is 24-7? No let up. No. You are here to open your gate. You are here to open your gate and let all the good. And then it says, and if I be lifted up, guess what? I can then encourage all others to be lifted up to. My role in lifting up myself is to become an example that there is a gate in all of us. And if I have found it, I can tell you that one is in you. And I can say to you, I can give you the information. You see, information is like food. All the information we need is around us. Right? But, if I don't read and take it in, guess what? Again, it's the same thing. Like if I don't take my fork, knife, or spoon 
and go into the supply and then put it in my mouth, guess what? I know it exists, and a lot of us know that this stuff exists, and we blabber it, and we read it, and then we go and we tell people, you know, I am the gate. <laughs> Don't you know that you are the gate too? That all of us are gates? <laughs> but you didn't tell them that you didn't open yours. Until you open it, you cannot experience it. It continues to say that we'll go in and go out. That wherever you are, in and out, you will always have a rich supply. Once you open the gate, guess what? The supply rolls in because the supply has always been rolling in, but mentally you block it. Because this thing is a mental journey. Life is a mental journey that all of us are taking. We all have everything to live. We have a mind to think, we have a spirit which is life, and we have a body. But why aren't some of us living abundantly is because why? The mental part has blocked the flow. Somebody retired some time and then came to me and said, Evan, you know I'm living better than when I was working. I have less money, but guess what? I now know how to appreciate myself. I'm not wasteful anymore. Hello now. I'm not concerned about the future anymore. I am living now. And I tell him, well, I, I've had to live that way for 50 years. Yeah. When you come to this place to realize that the exterior of you is all absolute good, don't judge it. Based on your past experiences, let the people who are in your life unfold in front of you and deliver the good that they came instead of being critical, condemning, and judging them. If all is God, then all the people in your life is also an expression, an air of God. They have good for you, but you can't see your good because your mind is programmed not to see the good. When the gate is open, man, you see people that you used to judge before coming to you with baskets as you take off. The blind, you see baskets of good. You say, oh my God, were you bringing that all the time? He said, yes. Oh my God, and I remain so hungry. Look at me, I'm so full now. Thank you. Hello now, have you ever loved somebody that you hated so much? Hmm? Hello now, have you judged people and be critical of people so much that you didn't realize that they spent 50 years in your life to tell you one thing and you couldn't hear it because your mind was blocking it? Open your mind. Open the gates and let the heaven flow in. The heaven is the abundance of all good things that you deserve being an heir of the Almighty. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Is that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. Say yes like if you own it. See, right here, right now, I can make a decision to change the course of my life. Just by holding to the truth. I am an heir to all that is, all that could be. For I dwell in infinite potentiality. All that is possible is before me. All I need to do is to hold that. And when doubt come, tell the doubt. Get thee behind me, Satan. 
When the fear comes, get thee behind me, Satan. When the anxiety and the worry, get thee behind me, Satan. For there's only one truth. If God is absolute good, so am I. And God bless. Because we do.